Well, the D'Agostini line seemed to be a huge hit, so we'll take another look at our next round of figures, and this one's all surrounding the Goblet of Fire, so stick around. Hey there, everyone. My name's Perry. And my name's Susan. And welcome to... The Potter Addict. Guys, I told you that those figures were amazing. And your comments, I mean, seem to agree. So I figured rather than postpone opening some more of these, um, we would knock out some more in this video. So I've got another seven figures right here. And these are all centered around the Goblet of Fire movie. And there are some spectacular figures in here. So I have been on the hunt for um, some more. I've got a whole bunch that I'm watching on eBay. Please don't steal them from me. Um, but um, there, um, there's a ton of them out there. There really are. Some are a little bit more rare than others, but um, I'm really hoping that um, I, can, I can pick up some more of these and complete the collection because I've already started working on the uh, separated displays for them and everything, and I cannot wait to, uh, to have that whole collection complete. So, Without further ado, we will slide this over to you and you can do your little magical thing that you do and trick me and stump me for every one that you pull. But I'm feeling pretty good about this one. So, you got your one? Yeah, I got one. You got your one. Yeah. I'm gonna say you're gonna give me Victor Karkaroff. Who you got? Who you got? I'm not looking. You said you had him in your hand. Oh, four. Delacour. So I, I love this one. This is a great one. I mean, honestly, guys, I haven't seen a bad one yet. They are all really spectacular. Um, but let me get my knife out so we can take a look at this one. She's on a brick. So. What did you say? She's on brick, the base. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, she is definitely on bricks. So, guys, um, I don't know if anybody bothered to kind of slip down the rabbit hole and take a look at any more of these. Um, but there are some really, really cool ones, some really unique figures. I mean, obviously, um, Arthur and Molly Weasley were great figures um, that, that I hardly have any of. I mean, I have like one or two other Molly Weasleys and no Arthur Weasleys. So, um, but if you have a chance to take a look at these, please do, because there are some spectacular ones out there. And once I complete the collection, I'll probably end up sharing the, um, there's like these little clips of, of all the different booklets that come with each one of these. I don't have the booklets, but my friend Andy has the booklets and shared all those with me just so that I knew uh, what to look for when I was out there hunting for characters. Um, so, um, so I'll share those with you guys in maybe like a short or something that I can put together so that you can see those as well because they really are cool. So without further ado, let's take a look at Fleur de la Cour. Now, I will tell you right now, guys, that this paint job, even if Eagle Eye over here can find a flaw, I would be amazed because this paint job is spectacular. Mm -hmm. The flow of her dress, the, um, her hat, her hair kind of in the, the ponytail on the back. I mean, she just looks elegant, just like a, a Bo Batten should, and this is spectacular. Even the, the little uh, brick floor that she's standing on. Yeah, she is spectacular. I absolutely love this. I, am, I mean, guys, these, I mean, they're just so tiny, but they are, the details are phenomenal. And one of my um, friends on Instagram pointed out a, a another line that is super tiny, and they're actually ceramic. Um, they're made in France, and I, I can't pronounce them, but they're the, the, like the Feves collection. That's F-E-V-E-S. If you look them up on eBay, you'll see them. They come in a set, and there are some other additional ones that you can get, but they're all actually ceramic and hand-painted and everything else. They're cute. They're really cute. I don't know if it's my, like, my kind of feel for, for my collection or not, uh, I'm trying to figure it out. I might pick up one if I can get it for, you know, cheap enough and just to see it in person because I might change my mind. But 
I will tell you, they have nothing on these. These guys are absolutely spectacular, and I am ready for my next one. Very eager to look. Let's see. Um, you got it? Yeah. Got it in your hand. I'm going to say you're going to give me Victor Crumb. Victor Crumb? Damn it. Gave me that Igor, or uh, Karkarov, Victor Karkarov. Yeah. Or Victor Karkarov, Igor Karkarov, sorry. So I keep calling him Victor. I'm getting Victor Crumb and, and him mixed up, so... Uh, but he's a good one though. He is a really good one. And again, a character, I mean, granted, I realized that his role was not massive in the movies. I mean, he had, you know, a few scenes in the, um, in the Goblet of Fire. And I believe that there is, um, a scene with him in another movie where he's in, um, actually, no, I think that's in the Goblet of Fire as well. So I think maybe the Goblet of Fire is the only movie that he is represented in, but spectacular character i love his just the, his look his kind of you know mean dirty you know like i mean grungy kind of look that they give him and i think he's spectacular so um yeah did you have something uh-huh you want to he's, see him? he's on a different type of breath yeah yeah he's got a different one so let's take a closer look at igor karkarov um again guys I mean, the, the absolute stunning detail that are on these tiny, tiny figures, I, I absolutely love it. I mean, the his facial expression, his beard, his hair, his hat, I mean, his long overcoat that's kind of, you know, like wrapping around his, his torso and legs. I mean, just spectacular. The boots coming out and then that staff. That staff is absolutely my favorite part of this one. Um, I absolutely find this one to be my favorite of the day so far. So I grant, granted, I know we've got five more to take a look at, but this one is spectacular. Now, I will say, in the essence of old Eagle Eye over here, do you see the, the bleed over right back there on the back mm -hmm. of the staff? There's just a tiny bit of bleed over um, from his hand to the staff, but spectacular nonetheless. So um, I, I love it. I think this is a great one. And I just now realized some of these, it's a little bit more easy to tell. This one's got some really pronounced felt. So they put a, like a felt yeah. liner on the on the bottom of them. So to keep them kind of from sliding around so easily. And yeah. I absolutely love that. Um, it does, it's a great little extra touch um, for these guys, but I cannot wait to do the displays for these so that I can get them up on the shelf and, and kind of get them lit up so that you can really appreciate them better. So right now they're just kind of sitting on a shelf with no lighting and they're just kind of huddled together. They look like they're, they're, they're homeless. So they need their home and I'm working on you that guys. You should make a background. Yeah, it would be kind of cool to do like a, like a background. So yeah, maybe that's something we'll have to think about. What do you got for me next? You got your figure yet? Yeah, I got it. You got it in your hand? Yeah. I'm gonna say that you're gonna try and be tricky. And I'm gonna say that you're gonna give me Victor Crumb this time. Daggone, it's, I'm horrible at this game. You so, lost, so lost, bad. You lost last time. I know, I didn't get a single, oh look, that one's all opened up. Actually most. you did get Ooh, Boy, that was close. It's a good that, thing my knife's not sharp or else we would have had a little bit of an incident here. That, uh, you got one last time, Snape. No, I didn't get it. Remember, it was the last one. That doesn't yeah. count because oh. he was the very last one. And so. you know he's in the Yeah. But this particular one, do you know who that is? Um, it's it's a dead giveaway by that face, in my opinion, and a, by the, the toad oh, that he's carrying. He, he's, oh, he's Neville. Neville. That is, that's my boy. He's a toad? Good job, dude. Well, I did get myself, but I didn't, I didn't puncture. I didn't, I just got a like a jab there but no actual you know, blood Dad, you know what that looks like what's that it looks like um a slug let me see do you, does it kind of look well like... i think it's his legs that's that's the legs it's yeah, really hard to tell in this lighting um but in the close-ups that you guys are about to get um you'll be able to tell very easily that he's holding trevor and those are trevor's legs coming down so let's take a closer look at neville longbottom and again guys uh, a really good neville i mean they did a fantastic job on him he doesn't look exactly like Neville Longbottom, but enough that it's very clear that this is Neville Longbottom, even with um, uh, the, uh, well, especially with the toad that he's holding on to and everything. I, I love it. I love that you can see the coloring in his Gryffindor outfit underneath, his tie and some of the other accents. Uh, I mean, the robe, the alternate layer in the back of his hood shows the inside um, of the actual robe is a different color. I mean, 
spectacular. I, I'm, I know, I say it every time, but guys, you look at how tiny these are and think about how hard it would be to capture this much detail. I will tell you right now, I do not do well. I don't have a steady hand when it comes to doing really small detailed things. And I'll be honest, I mean, maybe it's age, you know, whatever it is, but my hands start to kind of lose feeling and they lock up on me and everything when I start doing really tiny little details and they do not turn out well. I mean, it's when I'm fixing like a broken piece, you know, trying to maybe splice a wand back together or whatever, it's hard, it's really, really hard. So imagine what it takes to make one of these look this spectacular. I mean, they do a phenomenal job. And I will tell you, there is another line and it's a, it's a game. It's a Harry Potter game. It's almost like a Dungeons and Dragons game that you can play and they come with these little figures. And the figures, they have a ton of them, look amazing, but they don't come painted. It's a kind of like a DIY thing. You get the, the figure and then you paint it to the way you like it. And I would love, I would love to have this set as part of my collection because some of the figures look amazing, but I don't have the skill or the patience to paint them so that they would actually turn out well. So I would love if somebody would ever take these sets, buy them up, you know, and then hand paint all of them and sell them. I mean, you can charge up, I mean, that, you know, with, with all the detailed paint work, as long as it's good and the quality is there, and I would pay for it. I would because they look phenomenal and I would love to add that to my collection. I can't off the top of my head remember what the collection's called, but if you type in, you know, Harry Potter board game, you know, um, or, or adventure game or something like that, you'll get these figures because there's a ton of them out there and they look spectacular because what they do is they show you what it would look like painted up the right way. And I mean, that's what gets me every time I'm like, oh, I want this so bad. But then you see what the figure actually looks like and you have to paint it. It's just too much for me. I can't, I don't have that level of skill. I really don't. I may, I'm skilled in other ways, not in detail, intricate paint work. So you ready for that next one? Wait, Neville's face doesn't look like Neville. Uh, he's a little off. I, I agree with you, but I, I still think they did a, a decent job. I mean, it's not, again, it's, it's really hard when you get tiny, tiny like that to, to capture every little nuance of a, of a figure. You got your next one, your next one. I'm gonna say you're giving me Madame Maxime. Yes, I got one. The streak has been broken. So awesome, Madame Maxime. And then this is a great one because she is going to be a different size than the rest. She'll be taller than all the rest. And this is actually one of the ones I've been waiting on to, to actually do my display because I need to get an exact measurement on her so that I know what I need to do as far as I'm gonna have to create some smaller ones because this this scale is a little bit you know, I think these are only like three inches tall and then she is going to be considerably taller than that so we will see how much bigger she is than the others because I mean oh my gosh yes look look at her compared to Neville oh my gosh that is a humongous difference so yeah okay. it's gonna be a huge huge difference in the in the actual cavity size that I make Wait, those individual ca uh, shelves on. just a normal floor yeah it's just like a like a like almost like dirt you know for the most part so let's take a closer look at Madame Maxime I love this version of Madame Maxime she is now I, I have a Funko version of her which is great um, but I don't believe I have any other Madame Maxime's in my collection. Lego gave us a brand new one in the mo in the recent um, Durmstrung ship and Bow Batten carriage set, which is different because it's got super long legs, which I've never seen them do with a uh, with a Lego minifigure before. But they have nothing. None of the the Madame Maxime characters I have in my collection have nothing on this one. This is spectacular. I love her robe. I mean, I love the, the fur that's around her cuffs and around her neck. Her face looks perfect. I mean, they hit this one out of the park. She is absolutely stunning. I see no bleed over. I see nothing but immaculate details on this one. This one is a home run. And oh man, is that a hard one to gauge between her and Igor. Oh, well, we've got 
three left, so we'll we'll wait until those other three for me to make my determination because that is a tough one. You got mine. You got your character. Let's see if I can get another one. I'm gonna go with Victor Crumb. Who you got? Who you got? Oh, we got our second Mad Eye Moody. Wait, this so is, this is a duplicate. This is not a duplicate. No, no, no. This is a different version of Mad Eye Moody. They have two different versions of Mad Eye Moody. So, and this one is him holding like he's got both of his hands rested on the staff. So, and what let me, was the other one? Let me put this down. I've almost got myself twice today. So I don't want to get any you closer. Only got one right today. Hey, hey, I'll take my victories when I where I can get them because honestly, uh, I got nothing right the last time. You got so seven wrong. I know. I well, was horrible last you got time. Three wrong. I mean four uh -oh. wrong on this one. I didn't get through the I didn't get through the paper all the way. There we go. And let's pull him out. And I'll let you take a look at him while I set this box over here. All right. And yeah, so this is the second version of Mad Eye. You got to see the first version last week um, where he's just kind of standing with his staff off to the side. This one is him resting his hands on top. And I believe that this one's classified as the um, as the Deathly Hollows version of, of uh, Mad Eye Moody because it's the almost like the scene where they're in uh, Privet Drive and they're getting ready to take the potion so that all everybody trans, uh, transforms into Harry and he's kind of sitting there talking with his hands on top of the staff. That's what this one is supposed to be like. So without further ado, let's give you guys your close-ups of Mad Eye Moody. So yeah, guys, I mean, spectacular once again. I mean, it's a different version of Moody and I think they actually did a better job on this one. Um, I, I love the, now the staff is more kind of pushed into his body. So one of the buckles is like leaning against the staff there. I mean, you've got, uh, I mean, him just clutching that in his hands, his hands folded on top of each other. You've got his prominent scar that goes across his eye. I mean, guys, spectacular job such an amazing job and then they've got like um he's on like a like a two like a step down on the on the floor so i think that this is you know like the the step down from the the kitchen area into the into the living room that's where he's standing on on this one that's my take on it you know i i could be completely wrong but it looks spectacular love this great addition and look at look at the size of him compared to madame maxine i love it i absolutely love it guess who i am um harry potter batman what i don't know who I, i'm her oh you're luna luna yeah oh with the with the glasses this was the dead giveaway i should have gotten that but i hear you kind of all over the place sometimes so i never know with you you're a wild card okay. all right you got your next one you ready let yes. me know when you got it I got you got it i am gonna say you're gonna give me oh, i'm trying to remember who else is left in this box uh goblet of fire i'm gonna say man i honestly oh victor crumb victor let me go with victor crumb again oh. let's be careful with my, my characters oh I don't this one got in there by accident uh, I don't know um, I wouldn't have wouldn't have associated this one with Goblet of Fire um, but this is oh I want to say this is this is Goyle this Wait. is Gregory Goyle that's who this is yeah, is that the one when they change into yes yeah, yeah Harry and Harry and um, and Ron change into Crab and Goyle yeah this is Gregory Goyle you only got one right out of the two boxes we did yeah I've got one left I, I, and I, I know who that is I did not realize that this one even made it into the box to be honest with you so I think there would have been a better Goblet of Fire ad um, in in this one if I uh, if I would have done this better, so let's take a look at Gregory Goyle. Oh, I I love the arrogant kind of look that they gave him on his face as he's got his hands kind of po you know like resting in his pockets, his Slytherin robes and the green coming through. I, I really like when they do like when they give you the the different color of the inside of the robes, which they did here in the front, all the way folding up to his to his hood, which is prominent in the back. I mean, they did a spectacular job, guys. I mean, I feel like his hair is like right on. Uh, I mean, this is easily you you can't mistake you know who this is from from this little figure. I mean, could you possibly misconstrue the Neville character for somebody else? 
Yes, if you weren't a hundred percent sure, I mean, but the toad is the dead giveaway. You, I mean, that's definitely Neville. This guy is unmistakably Gregory Goyle. So, and then that leaves us with Mr. Victor Crumb. There's no Victor Crumb. There's a Victor Crumb. <laughs> Give me that character. Okay, him. No, no, you can't, because I've got to cut it open, and I almost cut myself, and I definitely don't want you to cut yourself. So. I should. Can I look at it? Oh yeah, of course you can look at it. I'll hand it over to you as soon as I get him out. How about that? But. This is another good one, guys. I think they did a really good job on Victor Crum. Uh, they gave us the Victor Crum in like his uh, what, Quidditch when it, when uniform. It's Christmas? No, this is his quid. He's in his Quidditch uniform for like when he goes uh, when he's at the Quidditch World Cup. Oh yeah. So uh, and I didn't get to the paper. He won. This one up. He won. Go ahead. Um, you know what? I don't know the answer to I that. The book did. might say so. The book might say, but in the movies, remember the Death Eaters storm the uh, the World Cup, and everybody ends up leaving or running away in fear when when the Death Eaters arrive. So, so I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna put comment below, guys. Let me know. Did they win? Uh, did Victor Crumb's team win the the uh, Quidditch World Cup? I don't know because again, I have not made it that far in the books, which is a criminal because Goblet of Fire is my favorite. So, okay. yeah. Every single one except this one's on brick, but this one's on a brick stair. Yeah, on a brick stair. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Observant. So let's take a look at Victor Crumb. Now, I love just the the cocky stance, him with his arms folded. It reminds me exactly of like uh, like a a character uh, a sports figure posing for like a card you know so they can make like his little representation for the fans to adore i love it i love his quidditch gear his arm pads his robe i mean he looks spectacular i am a huge fan of this one i think they did a phenomenal job so guys that takes us to the end what? and that brings us to what do you mean what no there's no more in there i know i i can count i may have put uh gregory goyle in here wrong but i definitely can count so that brings us to the end and the final uh of all of these characters let me pull these back so you guys can get a good view of all of them lined up and again look at i love the scale the scale is so spot on look at how small neville is compared to madame maxime and then how You've got Victor Karkarov and er, Victor Karkarov. I keep doing it. Igor Karkarov and Mad Eye Moody next to her, slightly bigger, but still tower. She's towering over them all. I mean, fantastic guys, Who's fantastic. Your you know, I, I think I'm still gonna say that Igor Karkarov is my favorite. I really love that staff. That staff that they gave him Wait, looks fantastic. Before we do anything, what? Okay, so. You do your order first, first to last. Oh, you okay. want first to last? Uh, so then, th that's an easy one. Those those two, uh, uh, she, he's my first, she's my second. I'm going to say Mad-Eye, just because I have a weakness for Mad-Eye, would be my third. Um, let's go, I think Floor is better than Victor. Um, Victor, and then Goyle, and then... Yeah, I just don't like double. his face. That's a little one. My, my. So that's my order of, of preference. What's yours now? This one's first, okay? That one's first. Keep it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can still see you. Okay. That one's second. Okay. You're keeping it going. What do um, you got next? Okay. Then Victor. Okay. I can't disagree with that. And then Mad Eye. And then Floor. Okay. So our order is not that far off. We were we were pretty, pretty close this time. And about the only thing that we did was. You switched these two. So, oh, well, actually, no, you switched. He was moved over one. So he was moved over in between floors. So that's the only the difference is you put him higher than, than the rest. But ever, other than that, we're kind of right on the money, So, um, which is rare because this kid's usually the opposite of me in so many ways. So. But I like this one's my favorite because his robe. I mean, not his robe, like the thing he has. On. Yeah, his, like, overcoat. Yeah, his overcoat does look good. So. And his staff. Well, guys. It's your turn to comment below. Let me know who your favorite was because, I mean, there are some spectacular characters in here. I really love um, just, I, I love this collection. I really do. I'm so happy that I finally pulled the trigger and started collecting them. They can't see those when you put them up that close. See, you gotta keep them back here. You're getting them off the camera. Uh, they wanna take a look at these. They wanna see these as long as they can before the video's over because we're to that point, guys, where I need you, if you haven't yet, Please, please, by all means, don't forget to 
click that subscribe button. Click that bell notification. Give us both a great big thumbs, thumbs up. up. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram and TikTok too. Guys, as always, it has been a completely magical video. I love these and there are more to come. I've got two more uh, two more videos that we can do of these and I'm still not done collecting. I mean, I've, I've definitely got to capture some more for you guys because I, I want this collection bad. So, but until next time, all you wizards and muggles alike, keep it magical.